So computing has come a long way, from mainframes and dumb terminals back in the 1960s, to workstations and local computing in the 1980s, to network systems in the 1990s, and then back to centralized cloud computing in the 21st century. Right now, we're at the beginning of the next cycle where decentralized architectures are being built. So to see why, let's think back to the local computing era, where applications that I bought and installed on my machine ran locally on my system. All my data would live on my system, and the application would always run on my local machine. If it ran today, it would run tomorrow and would run uh, a month from now. The interesting thing about the local computing era is that even if the developer went out of business and disappeared, I could still continue to run the application long after the developer is gone. In the old days, I had an editor that I liked to use, and I used it for many, many years after the developer had disappeared and stopped supporting the editor. So that was all possible because we ran our applications locally, we kept our data locally, we installed our programs locally, and we were kind of re responsible for managing our local computing environments. With the shift to cloud computing, things have changed dramatically. First of all, our applications are now run by third parties, and that brings tremendous benefits to our computing environments. Data mobility is much easier. If I use my computer today and then a different computer tomorrow, it's much easier for me to move my data from one computer to another. Data sharing becomes much easier because everything is stored in the cloud and uh, sharing is just a matter of defining access control policies. And of course, the cloud does a lot, does a pretty good job of protecting my data much better than I could do locally, probably, in protecting my own systems. However, it's important to remember that these benefits come with a price. Yeah, so we no longer run our applications on our own systems, and all of our data lives on, in, in third-party servers. If an application developer decides to shut down an application that I like, I'm out of luck. Yeah, I'm powerless. I can no longer use the application. I might have gotten used to the particular workflow of that application, but if the developer decides to shut it down in the cloud, well, I have to find a new application to use and get used to the workflow of that application. Yeah, so the application simply stops working and I can no longer use it. What's interesting is even if I'm willing to pay to use the application, there is no one to pay. The application is simply no longer available and I just cannot use it. If I'm lucky, before the application developer shuts down the application, they'll tell me that they're doing that and I can extract my data from the cloud. But even that's not guaranteed, right? There are cases where an application might, a cloud application might get shut down and users will end up losing their data that they had in that application. So this is very different from local computing. Uh, we are now dependent on third parties to run the applications that we use and we're depending on them to uh, keep our data and keep it secure. So decentralized architectures offer many of the benefits of, of cloud computing, but can alleviate some of the risks. So first of all, even, an, even if an application developer disappears, the application will keep running. Second of all, all the resources that I have at the application will stay mine forever. And third of all, the, the decentralized nature of decentralized systems ensures an extremely high uptime so that I can rely on the, on the servers and the application always being available. So let's drill into these three points for just a minute. So first of all, if an application developer disappears in a decentralized environment, the application is still running on the decentralized servers. If I wanted to interact with the application, I would simply send transaction fees with every transaction that I make, um, and the application would continue to process uh, those transactions. My state and data would be updated, and I can keep working with the application as if nothing happened. It's quite interesting that in a decentralized environment, we don't need the application, the original application developer, to help run the application. The application simply runs on its own in the decentralized environment. What's even more surprising is that many decentralized applications are typically open source. And as a result, if the application developer goes out of business and disappears, it's very likely that an open source community will develop that will continue to support and update the application. So as a user, not only do I get the benefit of longevity, but also um, I'll, I'll most likely continue to, to get updates and maintenance just based on the open source community. Second of all, um, the resource that I have at the application are mine and will be mine forever. This is the beauty of uh, blockchain-like systems where ownership is maintained by cryptographic keys. So as long as I own my cryptographic key, I'm the only one that can sign away uh, resources that I have at, in the, at the application and no one can take them away from me otherwise. 
So think of, for example, a game or, or a financial application. In the context of a game, think of all the resources that I built at the game. Those resources all belong to me. And that um, ownership is maintained by a cryptographic key that I have. And no one can take those assets from me unless I properly sign away the assets and give them to somebody. Again, this is quite different from a cl typical cloud com computing environment where the application developer is the one who controls who owns which assets and if need be, can allocate assets differently. Third, because decentralized applications run on many potential servers, even if a large fraction of those servers become unavailable, the application keeps running as if nothing happened. As long as some servers are available to process requests, the application will continue to run. So decentralized applications as a result have a, an extremely high uptime and I can rely on that being available to me and not having not have to worry about outages. So to summar summarize, uh, decentralized architectures are actually much harder to build than centralized ones. Because of that, it's not surprising that centralized computing emerged first. But now decentralized applications are being quite heavily developed and they might very well be the next step in uh, the evolution of computing. Moreover, because of all the effort being put into developing decentralized environments, it is now much, much easier to develop decentralized applications and developers you know, can take advantage of that. And we're very likely to see a huge explosion in the coming years in applications running in decentralized environments that again, we can all interact with and get the benefits from. So maybe I have to say, um, I'm really excited about the space. I do a lot of my research in the decentralized world now, specifically with cryptographic applications to decentralized applications. Uh, I'm a cryptographer, so I, I find the crypto that's needed for decentralized applications really fascinating. We do a lot of our work now on um, developing crypto systems and crypto tools in support of decentralized applications. But even beyond the cryptography, Basically, decentralized applications are kind of a new programming paradigm. Yeah, when you write these applications, it's really quite different from writing applications that run on a standalone system. You have to think about how the different components of the systems interact with one another. There are different uh, programming languages that are being used to write, these, uh, to write these applications. Even the runtime environments are actually quite different from what we used to in um, uh, standalone computing. And so it's actually uh, kind of a fun time to kind of get used to these new computing environments, new software, software systems, new languages that need, to be, uh, that need to be used to develop these applications. So to capture all that, we actually are teaching a course on blockchain development and blockchain technology in general. We've been doing it now for the past five years. Um, st students at the university uh, are, you know, obviously they, they're, they're quite excited about all this, this development. The course normally has uh, over 100 students enrolled. So there's quite a lot uh, going on. Um, we teach the students basically how to build these decentralized applications when they're done with the course they can actually go and build uh, you know, financial applications, gaming applications that take advantage of um, these systems. Generally, there are kind of, what's, what's be, what you need to know to, do, to uh, build applications like this is know this, the, uh, how to write the code that runs on the blockchain. Then also need to know, you also need to know how to write the code that interacts with the blockchain and presents it to the users. And of course, then there's the user components, the user interface that interacts with those two uh, mechanisms that are, that are developed. And so to develop applications in a decentralized environment, you need to learn about new programming languages like Solidity, Motoko, and, um, and many others that are being developed. You need to understand um, how the environment actually operates. So there's a, typically these um, programs run inside of a virtual machine. You need to understand the costs of vir different virtual machine operations. Everything here actually costs a transaction fee. And so you wanna minimize transaction fees for your users and even for you as a developer. And so there's a lot of knowledge that goes into how to write code for these environments that minimize transaction fees. There's actually also a lot of composability that's happening. So some developers are building software tools for uh, uh, decentralized environments that other software developers can take advantage of. So there's quite a lot of composability that we see happening. There are libraries being developed. There are services being developed that third parties can, can use. And so we're seeing sort of a, a growing ecosystem of applications that, where applications depend on one another uh, for their operation, but all of them execute in a decentralized environment like a blockchain or, uh, or an internet computer. Um, yeah, and so there's a lot to learn. There's a, uh, it's kind of fun to learn this new um, programming paradigm. I've enjoyed writing code for this environment myself. 
Uh, it turns out actually getting things to work correctly and securely is non-trivial, which is kind of what makes it interesting. Um, and so there's also a lot of support that's being developed to help write correct code, secure code, you know, code that doesn't have uh, surprises that are going to come down the road. And so uh, there's actually quite a lot of excitement and activity in the space. And uh, yeah, well, the, the, the future is probably going to be even, um, we're going to see even more uh, applications come out. And, uh, you know, the ecosystem for, for these kind of applications is going to continue to expand. Personally, I'm really looking forward to playing with the development environment for the internet computer. I'm looking forward to downloading the development tools and using them to build sort of my own projects. In particular, I'd like to kind of use those projects in our blockchain class. Uh, so it'd be kind of nice, it'd be wonderful for the students to learn how to use this new development environment, uh, the Motoko language, writing code that compiles into WebAssembly and runs on top of a WebAssembly-like system. And so, yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the uh, technology matures and I'm, uh, yeah, and I'm hoping that the ecosystem will increase in size uh, and I'm excited for what's coming. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of develop developers who also want to get their hands on the tools and use them to build new and exciting applications. And I'm, I love the space. I think it's really exciting and I'm really looking forward to what the next couple of years will bring.